You know, when, when he comes out, all of a sudden I look old, right? Bless Welcome you. back, Brother Bo. Can we give a big hand to Brother Bo? You know, we were having a good time backstage. I don't know if you noticed it when Didoy came out. Usually Didoy wears a coat, right? He's a little dressed down today. So Didoy thought, you know, I'm going to dress down because these guys are going to be dressing up. And then Brother Bo comes and he's just wearing a t-shirt. And then now I'm just wearing ripped jeans. You know, the next speaker that's going to come, he's just going to wear sando and shorts. <laughs> How are you guys? Yay. You blessed? Yes. Oh, I see so many good people in the house of God tonight. Uh, to, not, not tonight, but this morning. Uh, let me give you our big message for today. Are you ready? Yes. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, I need you to do this. We always do this every time I'm on stage. I want you to preach this to the two good looking people beside you. Just tell them right now God will always provide mercy. Always provide That's our message for today. And hey, if you're online, if you like scribbling notes, I notice that you like doing stories from time to time. Feel free to take notes, especially here also, everybody. Quick question, okay? I want to lay down the foundation of this talk. We are in talk four. We're talking about the book of Exodus, story of Moses. But I got a question for you. How many of you actually saw the original movie of the Ten Commandments? Raise your hand. Come on. Raise your hand. Keep your hands up. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the titos and titas in the book. You guys just completely revealed your age. <laughs> you remember that movie? Can we show that slide? The original one with Charlton Heston as Moses and Yul Brynner as Pharaoh. That, that, that was a classic. I mean, took you, you know, almost a week to finish that movie. But it, it, it was good. How about this one? The cult Disney classic, The Prince of Egypt. Did you see that? That was also a good one. I mean, with that Mariah in, in, in the Whitney song. There will be miracles. Right? You, you know that song. How about this one? The latest one. It came out, I think, sometime about two years ago called Exodus, Gods and Kings. Did you catch that one? By, by Christian Bale. And, and Joel, um, what's his name, the other guy? You, you never caught that? I didn't really like that one either. Why, why am I sharing this? I got a point. You know how Hollywood likes to take best-selling books and then turn it into movies? And then you've read the book, you love the book, and then you watch the movie and you're like, hmm, the book is so much better. You know, it's like they cut off some stuff from the book, and, and, and the acting wasn't as good, and, and they shortchanged. So, so you feel like you know the, the book was so much better than the actual movie. That's how I feel like when it comes to the story of Moses, because I've seen the movies, I've seen all three movies, and you know now that we're studying the book of Exodus, I feel like you know the book is so much better. And there's so much stuff in the book that the movie wasn't able to depict. Like for instance. This was the first time that I realized that Moses was actually this insecure person. He was Hebrew, adopted into Egyptian royalty, and now he didn't really like who he was. He was running away from his identity. The, the movie did not really show that to me. And the other thing that I love so much that I'm reading now in the story of Exodus in the book is that, you know how Hollywood and, and, and the directors would portray Egypt as this evil nation, like the bad guy, right? But you know, when I was reading the actual book, it gave me a sense in which I felt like Egypt was more than that. That Egypt was actually a representation of everything that goes wrong in any society, whether it's in the past or present or even in the future. Think about it. What does Egypt represent? Opulence. Lavishness. Having too much excess, right? That's what Egypt was all about, slavery, corruption, greed. If you think about it, Egypt represented everything that God wasn't. So you could say, you know, that Egypt was like, it was anti-heaven. God was all about serving others, being selfless, while Egypt was all about serving yourself, keeping your interests at bay. God was all about freedom, while Egypt was all about slavery, subjugation. God was all about humility and Egypt was all about pride. And you know, when you think about it, we studied Babel a few months ago and 
I remember the Tower of Babel. You remember that? When they erected a monument so high, why? They wanted to reach heaven. They wanted to actually be God. Not reach God, but be God. And you know, Egypt is like the next version of Babel. They erected monuments, but here's the difference. The, the difference between Egypt and Babel is that in Babel, they erected monuments in honor of their name to make a name for themselves. But in Egypt, yes, they erected monuments, but it wasn't in honor of their name. It was in the honor of one man, and they called him Pharaoh. You know all about the Pharaoh, right? But let me explain a little context about the Pharaoh. You see the Pharaoh, he's not like your regular ruler. Like, you know, we had presidents and, and prime ministers who we call public servants, right? They live to serve the public. The Pharaoh is a little bit different. He lived so that the public would serve him. And I know what you're thinking. Like, we got some, some, some public figures who act like that, right? Who live like the public should serve them. But anyway, that's for a different talk. Okay, I'm not going to dwell on that. So anyway, why did they worship the Pharaoh? The Egyptians believed that the pharaohs went down the lineage of the god Ra, the sun god, sun god Ra. So they were children of the sun god. So anything they believed, that anything that they would pray to Ra would be answered, would happen. So they 